Um, next up, we have Jerry Thomas of Syngenta, uh, who will be presenting uh, from the industry perspective. Uh, and Jerry, you're good to go whenever you're ready. So as Katie mentioned, um, I work for Syngenta. Um, I've been a platform manager within Syngenta for a little over a year. Uh, and in this presentation, I'm going to take, uh, give you guys a quick overview on how Syngenta is using uh, Clouder. So we call this Simple within the company, which stands for Syngenta's Image Management Platform. And it's our instance um, of Clouder. Um, so just a quick agenda, uh, I'll be sharing some of our key use cases um, within Simple, uh, and then I'll be taking you through some of our key development activities uh, that have been sponsored by um, Syngenta um, and been worked on together with um, some of the developers here within NCSA, um, as well as a roadmap in terms of what we have um, planned for the rest of this year. Uh, next, I'll give you um, just a quick view on the growth that we've had um, within our company in terms of clouder usage um, and showing you some of our yearly metrics. Uh, and then I believe we have about five minutes for a Q&A afterwards. So first, on some of the key use cases that we have um, within Syngenta. Um, so we've partnershiped with NCSA on Simple for about three years now, a little over three years. Uh, and some of these use cases have been there since the beginning, and some of these are some of these are quite new. Uh, but to kick it off, the first one around lab imagery analysis. Um, so this has been one of our newer, more unique use cases. Uh, and what we're doing here is creating uh, an automated workflow uh, to take images um, within a lab and upload those images within Simple. Um, and, to, and we currently have an internally built extractor uh, to analyze and store these results um, as metadata uh, for researchers to go in and, uh, and run additional analysis uh, on these images. Uh, next, on the drone imagery side, uh, we have users out on the field uh, taking multiple images with drones uh, on different trials that they have running. Um, and then they have uh, integrated a third-party stitching tool with Simple um, to take all these drone imagery, uh, stitch it into a large map file or the mosaic file, and then push that data um, into Simple uh, with the raw data uh, as well as the metadata attached to it. Uh, another newer major use case that we've had is on our vegetables side in terms of business unit. Um, and we saw that, you know, on their business last year that there was a pause um, on their business, uh, which didn't allow for breeders to go and travel globally uh, to different sites to analyze different trials. Um, so what they started doing is in March of last year, they started using Simple um, for further um, sharing needs, right? So they, uh, breeders within Syngenta um, uh, were able to share images across the globe with each other, um, images and videos um, to share uh, their latest trials between each other. Um, and this is something that has kind of redefined their business and something they plan on doing uh, even as COVID guidelines continue to come down a bit, uh, they plan on continuing to kind of go down this route. So it's been a, a big plus for their team. Uh, and then on the deep learning side, uh, we have been able to uh, enable teams to pull information on different trials. So we talked about this drone imagery. So they're able to kind of pull information uh, that's already stored in Simple uh, and then use predictive models using computer vision uh, for, the, for images stored within Simple, um, run their models, and then push that metadata back into Simple. Um, and then for phenotyping data out on the field, um, this is imagery along with its metadata uh, from different trials that are stored within Simple's organizational hierarchy. Uh, so this allows teams to come in uh, and quickly filter by trial, by location, uh, and a specific crop. Um, and then on the mobile app side, um, we have been able to uh, use Simple uh, and enable users to use that as its backend uh, for some of the mobile applications that we have within Syngenta. Um, so there's two main use cases, the first being um, the storage of imagery and its metadata uh, for efficacy on trials. Um, and then commercial teams are able to go in, uh, view these images on the mobile app, 
and then use them for photo releases or marketing purposes. Um, and we also have a mobile app uh, that's being created uh, within a lab uh, for images to be pushed into Simple and then within the application to be scored. Um, so within an iPad, you're able to kind of see all these different images coming in, uh, score it, and then have that uh, saved as metadata within Simple. So next, uh, to give you a quick view on, on some of the, the features and enhancements we've worked on um, together with NCSA um, and sponsored by, by Simple, the, f the first is being uh, moving our whole platform from NCSA's data center um, into our own internal AWS infrastructure. Um, so we've set up Simple um, using multiple EC2 instances uh, and running on an S3 bucket for, for storage. Um, and then last year, we did quite a bit of work in terms of enabling our developers to get more insight uh, when they're running extractors, right? So we have focused a lot last year uh, in creating dashboards uh, for them to view their extractor jobs, um, get specific information on extractors, such as their runtime, uh, jobs waiting, and then if there were failed extractors to pull those logs. Um, we're currently using Graylog. Um, but we have a plan to kind of move that over to uh, Grafana as well. Um, and then last year, towards the end, we went through uh, a pretty large development activity in creating an extractor catalog. Um, so this gives us a catalog of all the different extractors that are being used within the company. Uh, it gives you a view of the authors, the, the version type it's on right now, uh, and then a description of, of the extractor. Um, this also gives you a view um, of like the history of the specific extractor logs and then runtime metrics as well. Um, and then within the catalog, it gives you the ability to easily search and filter extractors by uh, file trigger um, as well as file type. Um, so taking a look at this year, one of our key achievements that happened um, earlier in Q1 was the ability to enable archiving within Simple. Um, so we're using S3's uh, intelligent tiering uh, to go through four different levels of archiving um, until it reaches uh, a glacier mode. Uh, so in the long run for us, this saves us a lot of money in terms of storage uh, and the ability to hang on to data for longer periods of time. Um, and then what's coming in the future is the ability to archive by data set um, for more bulk uh, archiving abilities um, and the ability to also auto archive by duration. Um, so setting up logic that says, you know, if someone hasn't downloaded an image in the last 90 days to automatically uh, push that through the archive, archival layers. Uh, one thing that's key in, in getting this platform to kind of more of a steady state uh, without much manual intervention uh, is to automatically uh, allow our developers to trigger automatic updates to extractors uh, within Git uh, without our simple team having to get involved uh, and do that deployment for them. Uh, and then lastly, on the Grafana dashboard. So this was actually an initiative started by Rob Cooper last year. Um, and he actually first initially created this because he was looking to get uh, more information on system health. So to understand things like uh, EC2 CPU uh, usage, as well as like the amount of credits that we have on these machines. Um, and that's been super helpful for us in kind of uh, troubleshooting the health of our systems. Um, but this year, we've kind of expanded this out um, to make it into a platform um, to track our defined KPIs and understand our user metrics a bit more. Um, so this shows us, you know, the growth of the platform within the company. Uh, it sh shows us metrics like the total amount of users, uh, spaces, data sets, collections, things like that. Um, and then as we're, you know, focusing um, this year on creating a charging model, um, having a dashboard like this is super key uh, in understanding our, our user metrics usage. Um, so quickly giving you guys just an overview on, on some of our, our metrics over the past year, we've seen all of our, you know, 
KPIs that we defined um, growing in a steady path um, throughout the year. Uh, so you can see in terms of unique users, and this is defined by a user that has logged in at least once in the last year, uh, is up to about 424 uh, users right now. We have about 265 spaces. Um, in terms of disk space, we're at about 17.8 terabytes, which was a large increase compared to last year. Um, number of collections, you can see we're in the thousands range now. Uh, and then in terms of data set popularity, we're at about 24,000. Uh, and then you can see things like, you know, users aren't just using Simple um, for uh, going through the GUI and running uploads that way, but there's quite a bit of API calls that come in on a monthly basis. Uh, and then in terms of extractors, we have quite a bit. Um, most of it is our previewers and digest extractors running. Um, but we have, you know, two or three different extractors that have been built internally uh, and quite a bit more coming uh, this year to kind of build out that number uh, a bit more. And then in terms of uptime, we've done a lot of work um, this year and, and the, towards the end of last um, to enhancing the reliability of Simple uh, within our company. Um, so you can see that we're at about 99.15% in terms of uptime, uh, but in the last quarter, it's more in that 99.9%. Um, so we've done quite a bit of work in um, getting that number as high as possible. So lastly, I'm getting close to my 10 minutes. Um, a huge thank you to the full uh, NCSA team, um, uh, especially the developers that have been kind of building out these um, features and enhancements uh, throughout the last couple of years, uh, and then also on the admin team for um, going through the tasks that we, you know, we need to go through on a quarterly basis, um, as well as the opportunity to present here. Um, and then thank you all of you on the call uh, for the time uh, and ability to present. So. Um, I think we have time for questions now. Yes, we do. Uh, and thank you, Jerry. Uh, Lisa, um, who has been managing uh, our Q&A, uh, could you read out any questions that we've received for Jerry's talk? Absolutely. Uh, Donnie Winston wants to know, extractor job management observability and a navigable extractor catalog both seem quite general needs are there already part of the cloud or ui if not are there thoughts to include this it seems like part of the 90 percent that everyone needs that kenton mentioned and yet syngenta needed to build custom solutions how do you plan to manage intelligent storage tiering is that part of the extractor job a staging step or is it a cold glacier to hot storage yeah, so for the first part of the question, um, when we create a backlog and create these roadmaps, um, anything that we develop that we see as a fit uh, and an enhancement to the larger Clouder community, uh, we do release that uh, to the larger Clouder community. So that th those capabilities like extractor job management and the catalog uh, should be um, visible and usable for, for the whole community to use. Um, and then in terms of your last question, uh, in terms of intelligent storage, so this is being triggered uh, by an extractor. Um, and pretty much it's on a duration base, right? So after a certain amount of time, it goes to that first level of archiving, then eventually to the second, to the third, and then um, lastly to that glacier storage. And there's a pricing model that AWS has uh, for each one of those layers. Um, so as it kind of continues down that layered archival process, um, the storage price continues to go down and down. Did that answer the question? Looks like the answer is yes there. Um, I, I have one more question. <laughs> go ahead. It seems like the AWS playbook would be quite helpful for folks who don't explicitly collaborate with NCSA. Do you have any open documentation on this? Great question. Uh, no, we, we don't. But it's definitely something that's kind of um, been pointed out to us uh, by a few different users. Um, and as we kind of continue to migrate uh, different AWS instances within Syngenta, it's something that I think will help us out in the long run as well, right? Because this was done February of last year, and there's quite a bit of work that went into it. Um, and as we kind of need to migrate to a different environment, um, kind of having a playbook on those would be super helpful. Uh, agree with that. We don't have anything right now, but I completely agree with that. Wonderful. 
Thank you again, Jerry, um, for a really great overview uh, of the work that uh, Syngenta has been doing with Clouder um, and for your thoughtful answers to your questions.